you know me and risking my life i went and i recorded a message for like an hour and i did not stop recording anywhere along the way hoping save. i would have been so upset if i had lost that content because of the fact that i mean i'm busy mixing up a moisturizer here in front of you guys to help you along with even that process and you would have missed out on that whole thing i would have just been so sad but i, I managed to save amen some days it works for me sometimes it doesn't it just turns off on its own it goes to bed it sleeps it yawns like some of y'all the bible says a little sleep and a little slumber and a little folding of the hands to rest and poverty will overwhelm you like an armed man and scarcity like a bandit so please season and desist from any such rabiosh look at this look at this monstrosity over here let's hope it also nourishes the skin and the hair mm. there's also sunscreen in here i wonder i wonder Ooh, i wonder why there's something missing somewhere over the rainbow one minute one minute one minute yeah i knew there was something missing i like my body very very oiled very very moisturized uh my face however is extremely susceptible to acne so we don't do hyper oily on the face but we do on the on the hair uh on the hair and on the body okay anti break it it's, it's like a hair food kikina hair food kikina hair food more body product to add super duper luster and moisture Teaspoon, how can I teaspoon? Oh, I don't want to use my hands. Oh, because I also don't want to put this in there. Oh, I'm gonna use I'm gonna show you, Slan. I'm gonna show you. I'm gonna show you. I'm gonna gonna show you. What means I'm gonna show you. Oh, I'll use my hands and then I'll just kind of like grub them into my thingy, my bobby. Okay, this is what it looks like. You hear food, Yakon? Petrolatam. Petro, petrolatam. This generation. Ah, 10 for the price of one. Dang, I mean, I'm your 10 gifts one, Jafala. 10 gifts one, Jungle Manjana Manja. Okay. Let's put this on the hair because it's ultimately gonna go on the hair anyway. Cause I'm about to break down this hairstyle, utilizing my new made moisturizer. Yes, I'm that girl, full of DIY tactics. Instead of buying a moisturizer on the market, this is what I do. Plus, on top of that, people on the market, like um, moisturizers on the market, sunscreen in Naebule. Let me just spray it, spritz some of it in. Uh, on the market, they're scared to put like jam pack a product with ingredients, okay? Because they they want to make like for instance an olive uh range they want to make they they want a tangerine range they want a marula range they want a sunflower range a jojoba range they want a vitamin e range they want a vitamin a range and so they will take an ingredient and put it in one product and then put all other kinds of bulking agents in it and all you get is that vitamin a or that jojoba or that olive like or avocado extract um instead of putting it all in one instead of like bulking it in one causing you therefore to purchase like twenty thousand products to get all these ingredients in so what i'm doing right now is basically getting marula olive um peppermint uh avocado a vitamin e vitamin a in one product because on the market they will never do that because they need to make money as companies they need to make money like you will find like when you go to Boma chinatown I love the smell of the sun of the sunscreen when you go to a bit of a Chinatown when somebody's experimenting and so their product is only sold at a Chinatown uh, they want to start a product range you will notice that they jam pack these products of theirs with all of these beautiful ingredients that's why I shop so much at China they jam pack their products with all of these gorgeous ingredients in one because the manufacturer the guy in question that is a uh, pi that is selling them is piloting and so they can only pilot with one product instead of a range and so they put all of the ingredients bulking them in one and then they will advertise it as both a hair cream and as a face uh, a hair a cream and a body cream and whatnot and when you read the ingredients list it's so excellent and you will underestimate it because of got chinatown type setup thing but when you think about the marketing strategy behind the look at how i'm busy spraying the sunscreen in here when you look at the marketing strategy so i'm creating an spf something sunscreen like uh, body lotion here okay Anyway, yeah, when, when you look at these ingredients, they're so excellent that it's worth the while to, to purchase it. But you would underestimate it because you go Chinatown. But you're not thinking about the manufacturing strategy behind it. It's all like piloters, Lay Janes and Joes that are trying to start a skincare range. Like a doctor that's trying to start a skincare range. And he's got to start small. He can't just go like branching out all big. And the only places that will sell his stuff um, initially are these Chinatowns and what have you. And so therefore you're going to find this... Uh, 
product being very high quality however for very low prices not realizing that this guy's piloting and then once he gets big when he gets big that's when all of a sudden he starts separating his vitamin e from his vitamin a from his niacinamide from his like uh, what do you call this from his aloe from his etc etc so what i'm doing right now is pretty much what an entry level dermatologist like what an entry level entrant in the market as a dermatologist starting a skincare range bulking everything in one causing a high product quality product um that ultimately i will you know for the sake of like economies of scale and spreading out my my product thin break my product apart into three different pro three or four or five different products um where before it was all just one big fat chunky product type thing so that's why i mix stuff up i mix it up because i know that never under heaven would you ever go and find a product on the market that is so bulked with all of these ingredients in it because it, it does not make financial sense for these organizations to go out like that because people would then not like see a need to buy three products that have got ingredients in them that are in just one product you get my point so that's what we're doing over here amen moving on back to the point the thing that i was talking about guys earlier uh the the issue with the fly how it is that i i, I described witches as ones who are like the the lead character in the movie the fly they experiment with demons until they reach singularity and they pride themselves in not being scared of things that tend to scare everybody else the things that everybody else like runs away from like menacing sightings uh ominous poltergeist activity ghosts um yeah whatever it is that really manifests to people who are involved in the occult they pride themselves in not being scared they pride themselves in not be scared this thing um is going to ultimately mix in together nicely with itself as days progress uh, as the products naturally fuse into one another for now it's gonna be slightly kind of separated days are gonna make it mission i know this because i've done it before it's happened before uh so this is what we're gonna be using yeah i've done everything here ne? let me think there's nothing extra that i have to add here this is pretty much it yeah i the omni gold i wanted to put it into the body section of this but then i would have to first segregate the hair section because I don't want to be putting anything in my hair that has got kojic acid in it. But I don't mind putting it on my body all over, all over. But I'm nervous that it's going to give me Kelly Kumalo vibes. So maybe we should just experiment with just one bottle. One little bottle. Instead of like the whole body. Like moisturizing my entire body with something that's going to lighten me. I don't want to be lightened. Or maybe let's just leave it out. I don't know whatever let's just carry on talking i'll decide as i carry on like right now and look soca logo is like a whole tedious program process that we're just gonna like keep on doing while what you're watching me yeah people in the occult uh keep on dabbling they keep on experimenting and the the experimentation causes them to develop calluses around their fear receptors whatever that even means of uh, ominous scary activity things that cause other people to sort of kind of jump out of their skin they pride themselves and over time just kind of taking them in they are no longer you know perturbed by those sightings they do of course get afflicted by things like nightmares and sleeplessnesses insomnia but for them it's like anything at all to get what i want ultimately these things torment them and torment them but then the tormentedness sometimes sometimes gets them to a point of um self-murder guys it gets them to ending oneself it, it, it leads them to suicide i can't say that enough people in the occult are so incredibly susceptible to suicide it's not even funny so i don't even know why like to just continue in such a horrible stead because it is dangerous in the long run i wish i had a whisker i do actually but it's not on me yeah they they endure themselves through hauntings and then they pride themselves in not being scared when something manifests all up in their growth see this cream is starting to become nice and creamy looking so i guess let me keep stirring my hand is getting to die it's getting to die Dude. yeah they pride themselves in not being afraid of that which scares everybody else and like in the movie the fly they end up like in tnt their bodies merge with demons oh come on no this thing young boy why does it keep doing this their bodies merge with demons and over the years their character changes so significantly their characters change so significantly to rather match that of the entity so what are demons they're fallen 
spirits right or fallen angels are fallen like out of heaven they no longer have a chance at life the lord says of us in his word that we are born dead in trespasses and sins and in sin did our parents conceive us right however we are made in the image of god and while we are still alive uh, there's still a shot for us to get redeemed and recover to ourselves that which was the original character of Adam and Eve uh, But after Adam and Eve fell their now adopted character since they fell was that called is something called the sinful nature and the sinful nature bears certain fruit According to the scriptures and you can go and read these fruit in Galatians 5 the fruit of the sinful nature uh, Covetousness jealousies whatever is going on in my life causing people to just watch me dwindle wither away die pass on uh, yeah, covetousness, malice, envy, strife, contentions, witchcraft, rivalries, um, idolatry, just all different kinds of worthless pursuits. Do you understand what I'm saying? And sexual immoralities. And over time, uh, one minute, over time, it gets worse and worse. Okay, um, I had to go and do some edits in the middle, so I'm a little bit distracted. Yeah, over time, it gets worse and worse in the sense that the character flaw of the said individual it just gets worse and worse like if you think about the fruit of the sinful nature according to galatians uh, 5 one minute if you think about the fruit of the sinful nature according to galatians 5 um and you magnify them whatever they might be dissensions rivalries jealousies strivings envies like let me let me just highlight jealousy on its own because that's something that I am personally suffering quite a lot from and it never used to be like this uh, I've been jealous before I've also been jealous over if that's even the right adverb okay but never in my life have I ever experienced this level of sabotage due to jealousy in my life like it has reached astronomical levels the Bible says of jealousy that envy anger sort is overwhelming and fury is a flood but who can stand before jealousy anger is overwhelming fury is a flood but who can stand before jealousy in other words jealousy is just so wrathful in and of itself it is it inspires so much detestable behavior in human beings that no one can stand before it so when you are already a jealous chick to understand and because of jealousy you then go to a sangoma to bewitch your girl's prospects for marriage you are asking a demon to come inside you of jealousy you are asking a demon that tends to operate very richly in the vice that is jealousy to come and lodge in you to therefore magnify the height of what it is that you could potentially do because of being jealous so now there is no end as to what you would be prepared to do due to being jealous if at all you were inspired at all the very first time upon being envious of somebody to go and bewitch them next time you might just kill because of jealousy or you will be pretty much the perpetrator against the life of said person looking at you right now you will be the perpetrator against Karabo let's think about what has happened to Karabo's life my life I lost everything overnight because of jealousy because of people who made a decision that I am no longer gonna live that I'm not gonna get my husband I'm not gonna get my children I'm not gonna get anything that I want basically that was the first spell that they cast and now a good decade down the line almost a decade people are watching me die they're waiting for me to die rather than me get what I want anyway because I survived all of their insanity they would much rather finish this off that is a jealousy a jealousy sorry that was like a little pea-sized jealousy that graduated to being a whole beanstalk a whole beanstalk that you know you're jack in the beanstalk it's no longer just a bean or a pea it is a beanstalk that's what it is that people's jealousy has become it has reached the heavens do you understand it is so menacing that no one can stand before it anger is overwhelming fury is a flood but who can stand before jealousy if your jealousy initially led you to sabotaging your girl's marriage you will never stop with her to a point where you will watch your girl enter into a car whose engine is malfunctional knowing that the, the, the engine is malfunctional but because you so envy your friend Uncampane, that she would get into an accident that might leave her with a deformity that might leave her with a deformity and so now you don't have to, to, to what is this uh, compete with your girl anymore you will let your friend put like my mom's jealousy is so exorbitant that she watched my acne thrive until I finally found a solution for it rather than help me along that's a person who anger is overwhelming in them so too is fury but no one can stand against their jealousy 
so that's just the one fruit alone that is just jealousy on its own how about all the other fruit of the sinful nature that you can think of first there is cover there is covetousness right envy jealousy they all fall within the same category but then what about sexual immorality what is the height of what you can do with sexual immorality you start out um like i remember when i was in school not in school sorry Mara, in the early stages of my career with a new friends this one friend of ours my cousin's friend if anything rocked up a complaining crying that i already told the story briefly that her boyfriend spanked her the new guy that she was dating when they started to get like down and dirty he spanked her and she was all upset she was all upset on some why the heck did you do that like i'm not a porn set for crying out loud i'm not a porn set for crying out loud that same girl two three years down the line rocked up and told us that she experimented with not the same boyfriend another guy with anal sex the same girl that freaked out when a guy spanked her experimented with anal sex and we all looked at her on some whoa <laughs> you did what you let a guy do what to you and we just looked at her on some hey i guess it's the age of the sexual revolution all of us were shocked because she was the girl that was crying that some dude spanked her and now she was experimenting with even deeper versions of sexual perversion that's what's good so what is the height of what a person that uses witchcraft in order to get sex can do here is a man that likes a woman this chick is not interested in him he wants to sleep with her high and low he maybe even wants to make her a girlfriend he made and then he goes and takes Ikorobella a last spell something that is going to cause a, a severity of sexual lust in a, a woman for a man overnight when she was not interested in him at first that man has gone on right ahead to grab an already existing challenge that he has with his uh, sinful nature his sinful nature already comes packaged with sexual immorality as a fruit it already comes packaged with certain vices without you having to add singularity to it in demons without you having to mess with demons you are already a liar without you having to mess with demons you're already a fornicator without messing with demons you are already uh, uh, jealous you are already a reviler you're already full of slander and gossip when then you go and you add demons on that when you use witchcraft you exacerbate the fruit of the sinful nature you worsen the height of perversion of sexual perversion that's why this world is so sick today that's why it is so full of sexual perversity today and that's why people are, are normalizing things that just two three years ago they were they found detestable now people find it okay and acceptable to be in polyamorous relationships that is what the height of sexual perversion does polyamory of which is basically the extended version like the sister cousin of polygamy in that it basically allows both the man and the woman in question to have as many partners as they want in one relationship like everybody is everybody's girlfriend like there are five people in a relationship and they're all dating each other that's polyamory do you understand uh, polygamy is uh what is this one man multiple wives or perhaps one woman multiple husbands but polyamory is a one man uh, is five men five women all dating each other yeah and that is apparently a sexuality that is acceptable in 2023 and for me it's like that is an extension of sexual immorality it is first people having sex outside of marriage and now they're having sex with as many people as they want in one relationship like imagine me being in a relationship with five guys and all the five guys know i'm in a relationship with them and they're in a relationship with each other with each other we're all just dating so today i'm with jabu kawasani i'm with tepo then really tepo doesn't have qualms because we're all one relationship if however i go and i have uh, sexual relations with tamba who's not part of the polyamorous affair that's called that's considered cheating so it's a contract entered into with multiple people and you can't cheat on them however you can have each other just exchange each other that is a height of sexual perversion that uh, frankly like you know the bible says in romans 1 that people with all of their sexual perversions and their sins keep on inventing new ways to sin they keep on innovating brand spanking new ways to sin and polyamory is an innovation since people got um worn out they got exhausted orgies were not enough right so sexual perversions like orgies were already a thing where it is that people will all have sex with each other like five or six or seven of them in one sitting and imagine that they're exploring their sexuality when orgies got old and dry like a geriatric when they were no longer you know spunky funky and exciting then things like polyamory came in where now just like in the orgy you're having a relationship with seven guys and they're all in a relationship with you two and they are all in a relationship with each other 
everybody in this 10 like person relationship is dating oh goodness guys yeah so now you don't even have to have orgies just sleep with one boyfriend at 5 p.m and another one at 7 p.m and then two or three of them at 10 p.m and all of them are in a relationship with each other and then people pride themselves in being sexually responsible by just making sure that every so often you take um hiv test you make sure that there's no venereal diseases being spread and that is the equivalent of sexual responsibility as opposed to as abstinence altogether from having sex with anyone other than your actual husband yeah so people like arabo when they live in a society full of po polyamorous people or women who used to freak out when men spanked them and now they're having anal sex yeah, when you look at Garabo, who's still good old-fashioned, chased for 12 years. It's like such an anomaly. Chased for 12 whole years, has, has not had sex ever since, I guess, the last guy that she was with prior to coming to Christ. When you are busy in a polyamorous state, when you're busy having orgies, when you are busy, uh, what is this, uh, exchanging partners, when you are busy getting spanked, and when you're busy having anal sex, when you look at somebody that is waiting on Christ to have sex after marriage, you're gonna hate them. According to 2 Timothy 3, those people are called despisers of those who do good. So the world is fast running out of monogamous, chaste people waiting on the Lord for Christ. And so jealousy, no one can stand before it in the presence of such people. Anger is overwhelming and fury is a flood. But who can stand against a mob of women that are jealous of a woman because she has not had some man's nether regions enter the part where her fecal matter comes out? A woman that will never ever allow herself to be spanked by a guy successfully without that guy facing criminal charges a woman that is waiting on the lord for a husband and this man must be christian and you're busy getting anal sex like you are gonna have problems with her you are gonna have problems with her because you have fallen from grace you have merged with a fly and now that fly has magnified your your sexual deviancy that fly has magnified your jealous deviancy that fly has magnified your just whatever uh, degrees and oomphs of perversion in multiple categories that you could possibly walk in all of that makes you look upon those who do good as they gotta go you develop a resentment for them demons are fallen they are fallen entities that are cast out of heaven they can never ever be embraced by a holy god demons and fallen angels alike right so when you're that finished off you will of course hate everything that is wholesome and that belongs to heaven including people with the image of god in them so if you can merge with them and then over time just magnify yourself in them until they look nothing like those in whose image uh, 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 those made in the image of god until these people look like nothing at all of what god made them to be do you understand then on that day you have essentially reached what would be the equivalent of spiritual singularity in artificial intelligence a singularity is this thing that is feared that ai is going to take us all over because it's ultimately going to merge with um our machines and having its own consciousness and its own mind do its own thing and human prompting will no longer be able to stay ai from doing whatever it wants to do it's called singularity yeah well um human beings singularity was a, a thing long before we innovated ai and this singularity existed in demon possessed people where it is that no longer can you see any fragments of independence in a person anymore because of how much they are controlled by spirits how much their entire life is like in encircled by nothing but demonic influence where it is that this human being has merged almost on a genetic level with an entity to a point where you can no longer recognize usipo you cannot find ujabu you can't find usepiso you have no idea you do not know where tabang where tabo where pita le john le paul le tulan bagai because these people are barely recognizable from the first time they dabble with witchcraft they have changed they are completely different people you can't recognize them from 1998 you can't recognize them from 2016 you can't recognize them from just yesterday because they have been messing with entities for so long when people do witchcraft they end up addicted to it that is a plan by the devil because the more you can't just walk in singularity from your first spell ever that you cast unless you are in a hard knock like incredible intense high order entity seance where you're being recruited by the freaking illuminati or something but otherwise most people dabble with 
I want to mess my girl's career up. I want to get a job. I want a husband. They start with this amateur stuff, but once you've gotten a taste of success in this regard, you're going to keep going back. The devil makes sure that you develop a, an addiction to instant gratification, to just getting it and getting it now. Like quick, quick, fast, fast. You know, masisha, masisha, masisha. Type acquisitions. Handling people, gaditlar. Knocking them out the window. Uh, ever so immediately. My ex boyfriend, Shem, is, is a typical case of singularity. The guy, from what the Lord showed me, he's, he's, he's so different. He is no one. He's nothing like what he used to be before. Because once he got even the first, like, taste of success with sorcery, once this stuff worked so well for him that he imagined that, yo, I, this thing, man, I can use it for anything. Anything, anything, anything. He just would not stop going back. Dabbled, 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 dabbled until he was barely recognizable even settling for stuff that he historically never would have settled for there are people that have got just a natural character flow by a from the get-go that's why they actually crunch up even get drawn to witchcraft because there are people like those in Jafela, like from out of their mother's wombs they leave a lot to be desired right but there are people who had a sweet history and then one day they just become nasty my ex-boyfriend was that guy my cousin however my, my cousin like she's always had a funny ugly thing in her so i was not surprised when she went this extreme with darkness right my sister however sweet like however 180 degree transformation because of getting involved in darkness my ex-boyfriend my sister my mom uh the, i can like list the, i have cousins her sister my my cousin's sister the younger sister again another one singularity like people that started out yo wait a king suga could never harm a fly she is loved by everybody and then she's moody she is her her man was also like that my cousin's um uh, the one that became her husband yeah that one he was a sweet guy he was Watch it and change somewhere along the way. Initially, nobody understood what in the world was going on, but I came to learn later on as I grew in grace, as the Lord trained me up that that's why he became dark. That's why he changed. That's why he changed. He started using witchcraft, and so it changed his personality. And for me, it was like, what a loss because we had such a good man in there like his original makeup what it is that god gave him in Jafel, like a tacho, was, was just such a beautiful package and he went and destroyed it, it wasn't broken but he went on right ahead and fixed it i have um, my former best friend again sweetheart she was such a darling would never harm a fly type of chick that does that was not even comfortable gossiping other girls yeah and now today give something singularity i can list so many people that i watched change over the years and now Aung Saba Gandhi I don't step in their uh, on their toes in their uh, ecosystem because I don't know what they're going to manifest and that's also another thing they will surprise you too they will shock the living daylights out of you in the sense that you might think you're safe for like today with them because they're sweet they're smiling but fresh for now and then yo flying kick but chincha masisha guys they change like the weather like their moods you never know what to expect and so when you're dealing with a person that is that moody what do you do what is your reaction you tend to be very careful around them you you no longer let yourself go you don't let your guard down you don't know and as i know when you're in a relationship with a person like that and by relationship i don't mean just romantic but just even friendship you are always stepping on um eggshells and because you're always stepping on eggshells you then start to avoid them just so you don't get hurt because you don't know what you're going to be getting today when people start to avoid you that way like the play don't you see gay on that day guy uguti we in bugan now you're a fly you went inside a time machine or a teleportation machine with an insect with a demon you practiced witchcraft you entered you merged yourself you fused yourself with fallen angels not angels fallen angels have their own bodies with demons you fused yourself with demons do you understand and now they are possessive over the vessel that god gave you to live out your life on earth otherwise known as your body now they are on a mission to reach you and to singularity now they are racing against time you see the argument with singularity and artificial intelligence is that uh, by by many people who quit the industry they're like i had to stop because i didn't want to see people go on right ahead and ruin the earth I don't want people destroying the world. I I, I don't want to watch it happen. Not on my watch. And so a lot of the the uh, tech giants, tech um professionals are quitting their jobs in the tech space because they can see what artificial intelligence is basically getting towards where it is heading it is taking the human race to uncharted territory 
And so for them, it's like, I don't want to be there to see the stuff getting ransacked, right? So they pull out, they break away, they quit Google, they quit working for Microsoft, they quit working for big tech, essentially. And then they start doing all of these, like, um, they open YouTube channels and they basically sound a warning about AI and it reaching singularity. They sound, they sound, they, they sound warnings, but there are others in this industry who are like, if I were to leave because I see where this thing is going, there's going to be somebody irresponsible that's going to take this up and run with it. So I might as well stay so I can monitor it. However, humanity, it is written in God's word that our hearts are deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. So there is no end to telling what it is that we're going to do. So out of one guy, one guy out of, out of 20 guys that has a conscience about AI that decides to pull away or that decides to stick around in the industry to monitor it there are 10 others who are nefarious who don't care what this could mean for the human race because they're trying to make money today so what I'm trying to explain to you guys is that there are more evil human beings than there are good ones there are more evil people that could not care less about the potential long-term ramification ramifications of their actions than there are guys that are actively trying to thwart this so it doesn't matter how many tech bosses quit their jobs or stay so that they can monitor how far AI goes bottom line is there will always be more evil developers there will always be more evil underground coders there will always be more evil employees of big tech or even small tech that will be prepared to take this thing to the height of itself to the end of itself do you understand what i'm saying so uh when, when it comes to the, the whole thing velavela with singularity inside human beings with demons there will always be people that spot early on that this stuff is not right witchcraft like there are people currently in the country pulling out of witchcraft pulling out of Ubungoma basically upon waking up to realize what you hi yo hi hey, this stuff no I, 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 I and in so saying that don't necessarily turn their lives to Jesus they don't get saved I don't know how many testimonies of people that have left the new age and the occult I've listened to on the internet that did not leave the new age for Christ they just left it because it was nasty they basically made an observation on air of impending singularity they saw they were changing they saw that the world around them was changing they saw that they were what they were doing wasn't it was nasty it was messed up it was really hurting people in some way and so they made a willpower decision to just stop but without Jesus but understand that there are far fewer people just walking away from the occult purely because it's nasty and even without Jesus like without turning their lives over to the true healer right they walk away because they realize what it's is messed up they start YouTube channels where they're warning the world guys yeah this stuff is dangerous don't play with fire you will get burned yeah that's what's good yeah these people create some awareness but there will always be way more tarot card readers way more crystal users way more spirit prospertists voodoo priests there will always be way more witches way more people experimenting with with the Ouija boards with um you know, the power of a, the law of attraction blah blah there will always always be way more evil people experimenting with a, a get rich quick scheme than there will be sobering people that realize that this thing is a sham and it is ultimately very destructive for it to be controllable in any way the only way out is Christ there are however people that are trying to break away from witchcraft without Jesus because they realize it's nasty but they are a small percentage in comparison to the numbers of people that recognize the ill-gotten gain that is to be acquired by witchcraft that are prepared to basically call the bluff of singularity tell themselves that when we get there we get there we get there and some of them are just greedy they're selfish telling themselves Wuti, by the time ai reaches singularity i will be dead it will ransack essentially my daughter um or my my much younger sister but it won't come for me i'm gonna be a nice little geriatric by then but you see the thing about uh, the, the rate of growth of artificial intelligence is that it is so astronomical so exponential that it is probably going to catch up with all of us within our lifetimes and with not even within like you know like different decades of our lifetimes it, it is likely something that is to catch up with us within the same decade that we are in right now like what this is 2023 it is likely by 2030 to be quite a beast quite a beast so you don't even have to reach a new generation you don't even have to bring a brand spanking new generation baby into the world for ai to start to look really kind of creepy there are already videos that deep fake on the internet that are so believable and really frankly it, 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 it is going to make the provision in courts of video footage as evidence a thing of the past because of deep fake do you understand 
that for me is already uh, you know it's already like deep fake has already taken things too far the fact that we have gotten there i feel like the human race just needs to be brought to a blistering end we need to just die off already we need to disappear from the earth like the rapture needs to happen because the rate of human innovation and to wickedness has just reached exorbitant levels just because you are smart and you are a genius and you can innovate something doesn't mean you should it doesn't mean you should do you understand what i'm saying there aren't enough moral human beings to make that call to therefore subdue the what would be the equivalent of minority evil people under the monitoring diplomacy of good guys there are frankly not enough of them there are frankly not enough non-christian good guys to subdue and handle and put underneath their little fingers do you understand um the wicked there are too many evil people i have witnessed an equivalent of impending singularity in almost every person i've ever known in my ecosystem because they found out about witchcraft and there has not been enough of them if at all any that have made a decision to just stop doing witchcraft because they saw i've got a cousin that's still investing 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 despite it having yielded such wicked fruit in her life her husband has reached conviction that this stuff is nasty but he hasn't stopped do you understand what i'm saying like my ex-boyfriend recently like about two or three months ago once he said a death spell on me because i became embarrassing in other words he made an observation that witchcraft does nothing good and instead of stopping staying his hand just staying away in jafela and basically bearing the consequences of his actions he chose to continue to push this to see if at all he can't ultimately get away with a murder that he is obviously failing abysmally to get away with right now my ex-boyfriend is reaching singularity if not having reached it altogether my cousin is about to reach singularity to a point where the lord is gonna kill her if she doesn't repent her husband is convicted of sin but does not want to repent my sister like is properly living in isolation in a shallow little hole and prepared to confess what's going on that she might find healing these people just keep on dabbling and dabbling and dabbling they are morphing manifesting into the insincy wait see this thing get that i'll mix it up tomorrow because right now i'm trying to make it super 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 smooth while it's fresh and it's just not going to become what i want it to be while it is as fresh as it is yeah no i've got uh, family members and former friends that are recognizing the insanity of sorcery but they're letting themselves morph into flies altogether and when you become insincy when you become a fly altogether guys herein lies the deal somebody gotta shoot you you cannot be a life-sized insincy when i was working at mtn i dated this like random dude for like two months that put witchcraft on me right how god showed me his witchcraft he was a big fat giant insincy a fly the size of me sitting next to me at my grandmother's house usually whenever things are shown me in my grandmother's house i'm being shown regression i'm being shown backwardness uh, uh, uh witchcraft basically in operation and this guy was in my grandmother's house basically regressing me to being back with him I, he was trying to get back together with me and in my dream all i saw was this giant fly so they had that guy reached singularity it appears from what the lord showed me already back then i don't know what's going on with him today but he is a prophecy christian that much is true otherwise i wouldn't have dated him a professing christian that is literally according to heaven looking like the fly a professing christian that in the sight of god looks like Ntinti. in other words he's reached singularity in the sight of god he's as good as being a fly he has merged with entities so much that nothing of him is left anymore to operate now he works on nothing but witchcraft now like everything he wants it's witchcraft everything he needs it's witchcraft every desire in his life is burnt by is sparked into existence by witchcraft you cannot lean on sorcery for everything you will never know with what, what's authentic and what isn't so i'm trying to call people who are headed for singularity to christ on some do you not see you're getting taken over by entities if at all you cannot recognize yourself today from who it is that you were two years ago three years ago four years ago if at all you are a woman that is suddenly allowing yourself to have a man ram into her from the back goodness gracious anal sex when i was on the come up all of us not even some were just like we were it was not even a discussion point in topics between girls when we were talking about sex baby let's talk about you and me it was never like never the one thing that we were toggling with whether or not we were we, we were prepared to do it was oral sex would you be prepared to give a guy a hit would you be prepared to do fellatio would you would you oh my goodness i don't know i don't want to swallow eh, eh, eh. that's what we spoke about but like anal sex was just like something there like it was 
stuff that gay guys did. That's all that we knew. But now it is literally, apparently, literally a whole discussion in bedrooms of heterosexual couples. Sexual perversion. Same women that would never have allowed that to happen are allowing men to experiment with them because they watch so much porn that they're not satisfied with the woman's like proper pocket that God gave for men to enter into. They want something else. Women are allowing themselves to be experimented on by men with basically gay fetishes. They, they watch so much porn that they can't help but not go out like that. It's a sexual perversion and only when you are in Christ do you see it for what it is. When you are in Christ do you recognize how far the world has fallen. When you are in the Lord Jesus Christ, we are born. When stuff is like rotten. But these people are not even trying to come to Jesus. When are you just seeing yourself in Jephala as a woman that all of a sudden with your husband or with your boyfriend, you are doing that. You are allowing a man to do that to you because, hey, it's a sexual revolution and this is not 1902. You're telling yourself this is not 1902. That hole was never supposed to be used for sex. Otherwise, you would have been able to have a baby that way, but you can't. It's a sexual perversion. Do you understand? But it is being taken up more and more because of singularity. People are using so much witchcraft that they can't even realize that this sorcery has made out of them men and women that are barely recognizable anymore. This thing is starting to look so much like a beautiful cream now. Men and women are barely recognizable. Do you understand? Who it is that you used to be has changed and you think that you've just matured or you have grown or you have become, you've gotten loosened. You're, you, you're, not, you're, you're less stiff-necked. You're, you're less uptight. Yeah, That's what you say. You think Uti, you're less uptight except according to God, you have fallen even farther from where it is that you, you started out. It was over before it started. Before For us as the human race, we are born dead before sorry we are born dead in trespasses and sins so essentially it's over before it even starts therefore when you decline in character over the years you are going into the abyss don't you see you are born on a flat earth not a flat earth the earth is round but what i wanted to say is on a flat surface surface you are walking on a flat surface and as the years progress you sink you sink you sink evidencing that you're going to hell your morals chip away over time and you just become looser and looser the number of women that are currently experimenting with relations with women the number of men and let me just speak to the women uh, in particular when i was on the come up i didn't even know a single lesbian but i knew about two or three gay guys all right but now the number of women that are experimenting with lesbian relationships is out of this world women that are allowing themselves to have crushes on other women women that are allowing themselves to fantasize about such things with women women that are watching pornography in that regard basically porn where women are doing whatever with each other using whatever props uh women that are just allowing their minds to wander and women that are also allowing themselves to consider it okay to look at another woman and comment about her beauty the way that a man would a man would so when a woman sees a beautiful woman she says well she's so pretty she's beautiful she has a great body but a woman should not go on right ahead to continue to describe what under heaven if I was a guy I would hit that if I was a guy that's that's basically inviting yourself to now fantasize about women the same way that men fantasize about women like you you cannot look at women the same way that you look at men it just cannot be a lot to thrive in you and women are thinking that no it's normal because they're being taught or trained by netflix they're being taught or trained by the you know far left organizations and entities of the earth that are trying to convince everybody that whatever it is that wasn't broken needs fixing whatever it is that wasn't broken needs fixing like Yo, this thing is properly archer in these streets. Thoroughly massacring my hand with exhaustion. My arm. But it's cool. I'm trying to smooth it out. Like, prematurely. I should wait until tomorrow. But it's nice to watch it and say so quite like that. Anyway. Don't you think it's cute? Don't you think it's pretty? Pretty. Anyway, whatever. Yeah, so, um, witchcraft causes people to expedite or catalyze that thing you could already be nasty experimenting with things that don't make sense here on this planet of ours uh, prior to you dabbling with witchcraft but the moment you use witchcraft the more this entity that is inside your body because there's no way you can use witchcraft without getting a demon in your body yeah this entity will then magnify all the other things that you're generally experimenting with in life everything else that you're having an issue with 
your jealousy issue is going to be magnified your issue with uh, attraction to or, or rather desire for experimentation with women as a woman that'll be magnified your sexual perversion experimentation with your boyfriend yako with all different kinds of weird things in the bedroom that's going to get worse and worse like things are just going to get darker and darker and darker a couple that never used to watch porn will all of a sudden start like proper sitting around on a friday evening with popcorn and they're watching a movie but like they're watching pornography stuff like that will keep on ramping up and ramping up the more you visit a sangoma the more you have a desire for it these things latch onto you like an addiction the moment you take your first drag the moment you take your first schnaff of it up your nose like a drug you will be hooked and it is that hooking that ultimately tends you towards singularity so by targeting dini ni grand njewe o uguyenzwa impogan are you okay with ending up like flies okay this thing mean i'm gonna stop mixing it because but we have a super duper 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 i want to make it super smooth but i'm pretty sure that i can't do that tonight it's only gonna become as smooth as i want it to become tomorrow tomorrow maybe even three days from now but i have made my beautiful hair cream that's not mixing as well as i wanted to mix i'm already done so let's just like get straight into doing my hair now because i've been wanting to do my hair i don't even think i'm gonna be here to finish doing the hair all of this hair like tonight okay it's already nine at night and that just really bugs me like the pogani that a lot of people are no but before let me not do my hair yet let me just put this thing in its containers and i'll mix it up finish and flat in its containers yeah, yeah some other day to finish the mixing process but that's the final product you guys that is my hair cream my hair uh my body butter my hair cream it's a whole bunch of it it should last me a good few months uh then i won't have to mix it up i fail i get lazy to make it again or i don't have ingredients and when i don't have ingredients i'm all sad and so i end up just moisturizing myself it's just like basic aqua cream and it's just nasty it doesn't make sense like even in the slightest but anyway yeah that's what it looks like combo of everything total violent nourishment absolutely wealthy for the skin so i don't gotta be an ashy bean anymore have you ever met an ashy bean do beans get ashy i guess so if they're the beanstalk that gets really big because of singularity and their name is not jack okay yeah no like proper it, it does not make any sense guys the stuff that you are into cannot work it cannot work indefinitely like how under heaven are you content with the destruction of friends and family why aren't you waking up to smell the coffee why aren't you waking up to realize that you are reaching singularity your character is currently such that i was saying about the way that you used to care anymore you don't care the way that you used to care anymore and you think that that just may has is something that has made you a stronger person in that you are you know people are not going to step on your toes as easily anymore because of the fact that i'll send andaba as much as you used to care when you stop caring about people you ought to care about that is evidence of a moral degradation do you understand that is kind of like a hospital case it is a little bit of an emergency for your soul like it is something that you should basically try to see if you can't see a specialist concerning the bible says of humanity in the last days especially you there sitting around calling yourself amzalwani a christian that there is going to be a great apostasy in the last days where people are going to basically depart from the faith and give heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of demons now what these seducing spirits are the very things that sometimes you invite into your bodies they are in you and they are seducing you to disregard a travesty in the room when it is gawking at you these seducing spirits are literally calling you to violate your neighbor to disregard your child to ignore your best friend one minute these seducing spirits are telling you to murder your wife they are telling you to ignore the pimple on your daughter's face and not take her to a dermatologist because you that jealous freaky narcissistic mom these seducing spirits and these doctrines of demons are telling you that it's every man for himself when a woman like Karabo is suffering like no man's business and you grew up with her you broke bread with a chick you used to hang out goodness you partied together what is going on and now you're literally sitting around outside of my life i'm like uma thurman and kill bill now i'm in a casket trying to scrape my way out of it like box it out proper i can't think of somebody said he lessons not pay me or is it master pie whatever you know that that guy 
that trained Uma Thurman and Kill Bill? Yeah. All she could do was think of the lessons that she was trained to get out of a casket that her friends buried her in. The deadly Vipers assassination club that killed Uma Thurman because she wanted to go and basically live uh, a non-assassin's life. The reason why Uma Thurman in Kill Bill, that Omni Gold, I'm torn as to whether or not I should mix it in here. No, I'll leave it as a separate uh, thing because it just, it did so much for my, at my Kumas Fatlong Saka that I'm concerned. Yeah, no, the reason why she left the deadly the deadly vipers assassination club to go and just marry was because she was living a rough life as an assassin and she found out she was pregnant so she did not want to subjugate her child to the tyranny of that so she left they did not know that however and they then came for her because she quit the job of being an assassin in other words the equivalent of that in christian terms is you wake up to realize that you were born dead in trespasses and sins and you're headed to hell and you don't want anything of that nature you want to raise children in the admonition of the lord you don't want the debauched life that you and your girls were always roaming around in and so you choose jesus to basically fashion a future for you and you leave the deadly vipers assassination club because i ain't going out like that anymore i'm a woman in her mid-twenties and frankly i want a life of future where i like her i used to observe my my uncle and my aunt right the last remaining and only married couple in the family i missed the elderly right and um my uncle and my aunt are still hosting drunken parties they're still like getting drunk my uncle is still a drunk like they are still basically cut like there is an older version when i look at, at my uncle and my aunt i saw an older version of what my friends my crew of hangout like guys and girls were doing i saw that in my uncle it was like so si zokula still going to ama pricey dagwa talking rubbish and raising children in an atmosphere i grew up of course i missed my parents right and my my uncle as well and aunt and what have you and i don't know how many parties as a child i was in the midst of that were hosted by my parents or my uncle and 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 his wife and it was loud guys and these adults were were like playing these roberta flag lady do you know the luda van luda van ross Sabon this music that they were listening to having these toddler children these preteens these preschoolers living among them and it's a saturday night and it's 1 2 3 a.m and it's like boof 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 music outside and the kids are in the bedrooms they hang out with each other until they get tired and they sleep and when they go out just to use the bathroom they happen upon some drunk uncle that's like hello nana and he, you know he's giving you a sloppy kiss that smells of just beer and then you go to the bathroom sometimes they might even call you on some oh you will and that man is is looking so drunk like his eyes are bloodshot red and he is like unable to keep himself his balance the way he is so drunk and he's busy playing around with the little children and some ah, look at you little carabo look at you little tamba oh you are growing hey last time you saw me you were still a baby and like uh, they are so drunk there's a cigarette smoke everywhere and it's loud and it's just partying by parents that have never really truly grown up now that they have children memories of that and also observation of my uncle and aunt and even my moms and them aunties even well into our grown-up years now we're in our 20s and they are now our right yet to have children us but our parents are basically about to be grandparents now and they're still doing the same thing they're still getting drunk but this time around their kids are out of home this time around their kids are, are big and this time around their kids are also sometimes drinking with the dad they're partaking with the father in this debauchery and i just looked at this and i was like i don't want that i looked at that and i was like that's not my life i don't want my children being closed in a bedroom where they cannot sleep properly on a saturday night because music is pumping heavy outside where mom and dad are hosting a bunch of drunk heart moms and dad's friends at a bry and every so often when i go out to when my kids go out to use the bathroom they meet one of my friends who very drunk and barely able to keep her balance is like hello little hotazo ah oh, you're so cute how old are you now ah nine oh last time i saw you you were just two and my kid is like yeah, okay auntie and this person is drunk out of her mind or oh, it's auntie's husband and it's like oh it's like cigarette come okay wine and it's just loud 
loud and it's happening like maybe like two weekends out of a month two weekends out of a month like I, I can't like I, I saw that and I was like as in I'm gonna be my uncle and aunt one of these days if I end up in this lifestyle if I stick around in it so when I wanted to start a family when I wanted to get married I chose Jesus because I realized Uti, there's an atmosphere out here in these streets where parents don't go out like that in front of kids children will always have the innocence of a household where mom and dad are all very sober people where everybody in the room does not drink where nobody is bringing grown adults along to yell and shout all the way up until 3 a.m. in the morning to and then to talk to children who don't even know them uh, about how it is that last time they saw them if they were only two years old look it's okay to have kids endure that every child goes through the strange aunt they don't recognize telling them the last time they saw them they were two years old but i'm not trying to have that strange aunt be drunk i'm not trying to have that strange aunt be holding a cigarette in her hand while talking to my child i'm not trying to have that strange aunt uh be just debauched in jefela like a person with loose morals what in the world under heaven are you teaching children i did not want that for the life of me i wanted a sober household where kids are going to church every sunday and like oh um, that they eat they play in churches i wanted kids growing up or youth i want that's one thing that i was really really gunning for i wanted kids that would grow up attending the camp and also bingo youth a lot because i imagined that that was something that would get kids out of parties i wanted children that would know the church in and out like always just be a son twin like yeah and it's fun because they're growing up with other kids that are also in the church. I wanted kids that knew youth group because the thing as well got a youth group is they tend to tap into children's talents, like musical talent, singing. If the kids can sing, they drain little choirs, they do little stuff, they do drama, they do whatever. I mean, when I was at school, eh, but some guys were, oh, yes, in, uh, eh. can we please have a discussion? I like how this thing is just kind of mixing and mixing and mixing. It's getting smoother, but whatever. Yeah, no, um, I could sing like from as far back as I could remember. And I've always been kind of dramatic, but I was very shy. I was violently shy. Like I was so incredibly in the closet. I was like the teeny weeny, inty weeny yellow polka dot bikini. I was afraid to come out of the water. Uh -uh. I was always so scared to come out of the water. You guys, it was ridiculous how shy I was when I was a kid. It was frankly, a, like a, a crime it was a crime guys i was scared to talk i i would be hanging out with a whole bunch of other kids and i would say nothing the whole time the whole time i would say nothing they were i remember one guy teasing me saying yo carabo if you don't start talking you're gonna get bad breath because when people don't talk they, they get halitosis that's why i was saying that's why i bad breath you need to open your mouth girl like talk i was so shy i was so shy the only time that i was ever talking was if i was with like people that i knew like cousins you know very close friends from high school you know people that you got to know no no so you could just always talk with them type thing but and around new people yes like it you you wouldn't you would you would you would think i had i was a special needs kid you would think i was a special needs child the way that i was so shy i did not talk to people and my girls from high school would not know that because like i said once i knew them i was all over the show um but around new folk which my cousin always used to send me around i was always very quiet they also would vouch for that this loquacious verbose um lady that 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 is gawking at you now on youtube they'll probably be like yo can't take a rabo keep big mouth ka ha ka na can't take a big yeah yeah wow boo i'm a tonke salera mochurisa once and for all yeah no i was quiet i was very shy but you see a kid like that if my child were to be born like me at hababatu ali very shy uh shyness tends to be eradicated by company that a person knows and if you raise a child in a church it's a community that basically if they grow up together they know each other and so things come out because of how shy i was i could never just break out into song i could never just break out into like you know some lyrical juice i could never even adversity join little battles or whatever even though i'm quite the lyricist i could never do that because i was so shy and the shyness also bred in my bones the the what is this like you know too like stutters it brought stutters on board it made me 
muffle around and mumble around my words in a way that I when I'm standing in front of the mirror I'm quite fluent I'm articulate but then I will stand in front of people and all of a sudden yeah that thing over time it got ironed out over time ever so gradually and it, it was hard I had to work on it because in corporate there was no way that I was ever gonna grow in my career if I stuck to that I had a gift that under that no one under heaven knew I had no one knew I had it because I was so shy but you see there are environments that you can raise children in that will bring that out before they get to 25 23 24 I only worked on my shy issue when I was older because I realized that it's gonna mess with my career if I don't work on it but what in the world would I have achieved as a kid in in, in primary school guys if at all I had sang my heart out in primary school if I had sang my heart sang my heart out in high school if I continued to insist another thing I would enter competitions and if at all I didn't get anywhere I wouldn't try again so a lot of my talents that I suspected I had I started with them like here's where I put some of the butter I started and then I just stopped I stopped because I did not win a competition. I never went for further training. I never got, you know, chiseled, filed down. Uh, not filed down, but, you know, chiseled. Yeah, that's the right word. I never got, like, um, basically groomed to grow, right? I, I, I wasn't told, keep pushing, keep pushing, keep pushing. Like, for instance, uh, go when I was in primary school, I joined Miss Winchester Ridge primary school and I was in the top five and because I didn't win or become second princess or first princess or whatever and I, I was so hurt by losing I was so hurt by losing that I never ever again ever allowed myself to take any advice at all to enter any pageants every year in high school from grade 8 to matric it was around Mr. John People would be like, oh, go enter, go enter, go drain. And all I could think about was, what in the world happened? Go Mr. John, Miss, Miss Winchester Rich uh, Primary. I lost, I came number five. And I was like, I'm not about to go and beat Mina. Like looking at at the girl that won, wondering what what is, what is it about me that sucks so bad? What is it about me that sucks so bad? There is a girl that was in my primary school. Ne? Uh, she went to my, she was an Indian girl. She was in my primary school and she also went to my, my high school. And she entered the same Miss... What do you call this? The same Miss Winchester Ridge that I entered, right? We were in the same grade. She got nowhere. I got to top five, right? This chick kept entering pageants, like year on year. Like she entered, uh, what do you call this? Like she would enter pageants outside of school. Like she was always entering funny little Miss Lanasia, Miss whatever. And she would come whatever it is that she would come wherever she was at. One year, she made a decision to enter Mr. John. I think it was in grade 10 or 11. She was in my class from grade 8 and when she entered I was like girl like come on you didn't even what is this you, you didn't even get anywhere come Miss Winchester Ridge when we were in primary school what makes you think you're gonna win Mr. John this is high school this, the stakes are even higher that chick had been so trained in pageantry by the time she entered Mr. John in grade 10 or 11 that she won <laughs> she won <laughs> when she won I was like what you actually won like you actually won but in primary school she was behind she didn't even make the top five that I made so essentially that miss miss uh what is this mr john indian girl that was in my high school and primary school was evidence of the of, of the fact of what happens when a child gets groomed when you teach them when you train them they can actually like get to a point where they have so much confidence in themselves the sky's the limit they don't give up and then they come out tops she won i was like congratulations good for you but i'm not about to go and break my heart like proper joining pageants losing and then having somebody be like, oh, sorry, Nana, sorry, Nana, number five at least is not number Mchela. Yo, uh-uh. Yeah, when a kid gets groomed, never mind even with Miss, what do you call this, Mr. John, even with singing, there was this, when I was in grade 11, there was, the, uh, um, what is this, at my school they did a Miss, not a Miss, sorry, but a pop stars pop stars or pop idol it was fashioned against these music talent shows in the country like uh south african idol or whatnot and i had in grade eight auditioned for the choir in my high school and i didn't make it and i was like yo mm -mm. 
Yes, then, like, wait a second, no, we're not doing this. We're not doing this. But then, when, because I kept on singing in front of the mirror, when they did pop stars, I was like, okay, it's just a competition that's a once off. Uh, it's not like the choir. I'm not gonna try and be part of the choir because they keep rejecting me, go crying. They rejected me, go crying, go. go Prim go primary school in primary school they rejected me in the choir in high school they rejected me in the choir for grade 8 and when they rejected me in the choirs of both primary school and high school even though i auditioned and practiced like no man's business in front of the mirror i was like i yes and no i can't sing we're not doing this uh i'm, I'm not going to allow myself me you're disappointed Blanji, as as a little child and i might have my dreams crushed into a fine powder and then like basically just think i'm the scum of the uncomfortable earth that's what i done told myself as a nice little lady but in grade 11 i was like i i have more life thing my my mom had told me to join South African Idol, and I was like, "Yo, man, I keep on dress like K K K. Who was the main guy at the time? We're not in a little wooden mic voice. I'm not doing it. So I never joined the official one. But I was like, "Hey, I can do it in my school where it's not South Africa." that's gonna be looking at me but just these random sir john adam knights these random high school students that will never remember me again for the rest of their lives but i don't want to be permanently put on youtube as a video of a wooden mic audition years down the line as south africa's worst talent or whatever i'm not going on tv like i get to tell you now on tv i'm not doing it I'm not even like i imagine myself getting kicked out of this round or something like not even getting anywhere so i joined south, uh, like uh, sir john pop stars or whatever okay yeah so john pop stars and uh i auditioned kapinayam aliyah how could the one i gave my heart to break my heart so bad how could the one i was so true to just tell me lies yeah i auditioned got four page letter i'm sending you a four page letter was a four page letter mama always told me to be whatever it was some aliyah song okay uh i auditioned Gayona, and i made it past the first Round. I was like, ha! Huh. The same music teacher that I auditioned in front of in grade eight, wanting to join her choir, put me to the second round. And I remember I was tempted to be like, ma'am, why in grade eight didn't you let me go in? Because I also auditioned for the choir. Why? Why, ma'am? Why? Why? Anyway, I never asked, ma'am. Ma'am, let me go through, right? And then now it was the main um. Well, like I said, I was in second uh, round two. There were a total of three rounds. Ne? And round two, I was booted out. Yo, guys, yes, you know, so hard. Second round, I didn't make it to third round. I didn't make it to third round. And all that happened because of me not making it to third round was looking at everybody that was that made it to third round, fourth round. Th there were four rounds, yeah. Yeah, everybody that made it to the finals and even the third round. I was so envious of them, I was so jealous and I was so sad and I thought I couldn't sing in comparison to those girls. So I basically just kind of stopped singing. I stopped. I was like, hey, Oscar Foster, get out of I also had a friend like that who auditioned for what do you call this? She auditioned for you are not pop stars yet thing and uh, she didn't even make it past the, 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 the first round that I made it past and she stopped singing and that she could sing so well she could sing so well one of my friends from high school but like somebody just did not quite hear that she could sing yeah well the thing about having a church family is that stuff like that you know you're encouraged to keep trying and trying and trying and trying when you have a community of people that are always coming up with skits and doing little dance tricks and doing little shows for or what do you call this for the church like the little children's churches what do you call this like it has a talent show and they cause all different kinds of little girls and boys to sing and do whatever P kids develop talents with Without too much criticism they develop talents without too much criticism and they all get so included and so involved and so made part of the whole big camaraderie thing that everybody is doing that they don't give up that they don't give up and then as their vocals Im improve over the years as their acting and their singing improves over the years they then are clearly talented now because they have been allowed to keep on singing they've been allowed to keep on singing and so now nobody can deny that yo this chick can hit some notes 
You know what I mean? Yeah, some people's voices develop over very many years and mine was one of those. I was kind of flattish in primary school. I was kind of flattish in the beginning of high school. It got better at the latter part of high school to a point where I made it past round one of some competition. Um, and now that I'm what, like 39, I believe I have improved like significantly from what it is that I used to be. But if I had been made to train every single day, it wouldn't have taken so many years to get me to a certain level. If I had been basically a part of a choir, a part of a dream team, I would have gotten kind of far, if you know what I'm saying. Mm. Yeah, no, Maraka was made to stop singing because I told it's very shy, unable to come up for air, like not speaking to anybody, scared of the guys, scared of the girls, and nobody really even knew what in the world under heaven was dwelling in this kid. But if I was part of a church, if my parents had taken me to school, not to school, to church every Sunday, if at all I belonged to youth group, if I belonged to some children's church, guys, from the time I was a child, I was going to enter little competitions until I shone as the star that I obviously was. And I did not want my children to miss out on the star quality that they had to go out there and be lead choir members in a church because they were the best. Due to the fact that as kids, when they first out of my mom, my womb, they're kind of insecure, they're shy, and they don't want to project forward their talent that much. But if they're in an environment that is going to encourage the living daylights out of them, you know, they were going to come out out here in these streets hitting some high notes that they never even knew they could hit. I was going to give them that attention and I was also going to put them in an environment that was not too critical of their talents until they grew into them. Yeah, because I made observations that I was in the wrong space. And having made those observations, I then made a decision to choose Jesus because it was the best place to raise children and also bring out all their talents. Hey, Batum. Yeah. And then these rando buffoons that stayed behind in the world were like, bah, not on my watch. Next part.